Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I talk about an explosion, Ben talks about a dinosaur, and a friend of mine sends me a picture of his trip through the savannah. Oh. Oh dear. Starting off the news this week is another SpaceX Starship launch. Last Wednesday, the prototype of the company's Starship rocket flew again in order to try to complete a series of tasks that previous prototypes had failed to – to fly up, cut engines, make a controlled descent while on its side, and then flip upright again to land. This prototype succeeded in all of these feats, but its incredible landing was a little heavy, which SpaceX believes was caused by partial helium ingestion from the fuel header tank, not giving the engine enough thrust. This heavy landing caused the landing legs to collapse, and partially damaged the skirt, and a while later, the SN10 prototype decided it had done its job and blew up. SpaceX once again hailed the test as a success, and hopes the issues that caused the SN10 explosion will be fixed when the next prototype, the SN11, flies. In other news, uh, neither of us could really find too much this week, so I decided I'd mention something that we've actually talked quite a lot about here on 7 Days of Science – Perseverance. This week, the metal visitor to Mars went on its first journey, although not really a long one, travelling only 6.5 metres, or 21 foot. Everything on Perseverance is being rigorously monitored and checked, and this is still a very important step in its mission. It's planned to cover around 15 kilometres in the next Martian year, or nearly two Earth years, which is no round the world trip, but it's still a significant distance. Anyway, that's all the news from me this week, now over to Ben, with the worm news. Thanks, Doug. Also in this week's news is the naming and description of yet another sauropod dinosaur, Araca lecanante. Being unearthed from Upper Cretaceous rocks in northern Chile, the material this animal is based on comprises a few vertebrae as well as a humerus, femur, and an ischium. This individual was a subadult when it died, being calculated to have reached about 6.3 meters long, and analysis of the fossils reveals that this is a new kind of titanosaur. Additionally, it's actually the most complete sauropod so far recorded from Chile, and further adds to our knowledge of this remarkable dinosaur lineage. And finally for this week is the naming of a new genus and species of Anomalocaridid, Lanisicaris lupata. Discovered in the famous Shengzhang Lagerstätte of China, this is the first valid Anomalocaridid taxon from this locality, and differs from other Anomalocarids in the anatomy of its frontal appendages. But that's not all, the paper also recognises a species of the genus Anomalocaris itself from this locality, indicating that it had a very broad geographical range, previously being known from the Burgess Shale in Canada. This shows that the Anomalocaridid group had a high dispersal capability and were possibly climate controlled, living in the tropics, but were also adapted to a variety of habitats due to their presence in many different depositional environments. Anomalocarid news is always welcome, and it's exciting that new discoveries are still being made about these fantastic organisms. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next Wednesday.